test. I hope you did okay. Oh, I don't know what I did. Okay. Uh, but hopefully we'll have them soon and you'll know. No, what I did today is that I did a now we're going to begin to get into a time period where some changes are going to be made because people are going to get their hands on Bibles. Люди наконец-то получили в свои руки Библии, и это привело к большим изменениям. By by the tenths and after the Crusades. Примерно в тысячном году и после крестового похода. Many, many, many problems that had occurred by that time. In the Roman Catholic Church. And a lot of that stemmed over into other people who were trying to uh, consider themselves Christians. Now, I don't expect you to write these down, but let me just share with you a list of some of the things that had happened. And some of the dates that that they did happen. Ну вот это вы можете не записывать, я просто хотела бы дать вам видно тех даты, тех событий, которые произошли в этот период. By the 600s, the majority of the worship in the Roman Church was forced to be done in Latin. В 600-м году в основном все мессы, которые происходили на Римо католической церкви Они обязательно должны были происходить на латыни, то есть не разрешали язык понимаемый людей. And about that same time, about 600, prayers started being dedicated to Mary, to dead saints, and to angels. И вот к тому же 600 году уже начали произноситься молитвы к Марии, к каким-то умершим святым и к ангелам. There's nothing said in the New Testament about that idea at all. Но в Завете, как мы знаем, этой идеи в принципе нет. That was later brought in. То есть это вот что-то, что было привнесено в историю позже. In um, about 709, they really began to lift up and strongly uh, promote the idea of the papacy. К 709 году очень активно uh, распространялась идея, и вот пытались ее привнести в людей. And it was about in 2009 when they started doing the kissing of the Pope's feet. In 786, they began to really lift up and, and, and extol any kind of relic that they could find. For example, there were pieces of wood all over the place that people would say, oh, this was a piece of the cross. Oh, we need to put that in a special place. People can come by and see it and admire it and maybe kiss it. И вот надо вот эти кусочки вот сюда, на особое место поставить, чтобы люди могли приходить, смотреть на них, может быть, поцеловать их. And there were a lot of different relics that people would do this with. И вот было множество различных реликвий, с которыми произошло такое. In 927, they established the College of Cardinals. В 1927 году устанавливается коллегия кардиналов. And the College of Cardinals became the ones who would elect the Pope. Вот людьми, которые, in 995, they started saying, we're going to announce that certain people are going to be designated as saints. Выбирай тех людей, которых будут 
следующем вот, э, их э, при, причислят к лику сыр. 995 год. 你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道你不知道
Во-первых, в Рима Католической Церкви папа считался главой церкви, и во всем своем учении, во всех своих идеях он считался непогрешимым, то есть его слово обидится закон. The Orthodox Church did not recognize the authority of the Pope. Православная церковь, в свою очередь, не признает власти Папы. Instead, they recognize several patriarchs as authority, authority of the Church stemming from holy tradition. Вместо этого они учатся, что у них есть несколько патриархов, и вот они имеют равную власть, и как бы церковь, жизнь церкви зависит от той власти, которую они имеют. There was a difference then in their relationship to each other in relation to the uh, Nicene Creed. Также разница была между ними, что касается Никейского главе. The Catholic Church held that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. Римская церковь стала признавать, что Святой Дух от Отца и Сына. Orthodox, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father only. Православная церковь Дух исходит только только от Отца. Thirdly, the captured uses unleavened bread for Lord's Supper. And the Orthodox uses leavened bread. So it is interesting that it, this part uh, comes about as a result of an argument between the two as to exactly when Easter is. И вот что интересно, что как раз вот этот факт, он несет свои корни в то спор, который происходил между этими двумя церквями относительно того, когда же будет Рождество, когда, значит, когда происходит Пасха. And the early, I mean, in those days, the Catholic Church knew that it actually happened at the time of Pentecost. И вот тогда католическая церковь говорила говорила о том, что Пасха проходила во время вот Пасхи еврейской. And so they did that bread needed to be unleavened bread because that was what was used in Passover. Они говорили, что хлеб, который принимают при причастии, это должно быть не квасной хлеб, потому что во времена Пасхи в тот период ели не квасной хлеб. Orthodox Church argued with that and suggested that no, it was probably about a week or so difference, and it was more like a time of a common meal. И вот uh, при этом главная церковь говорила о том, что нет, но вот, скорее всего Пасха христианская произошла на через неделю вот, после Пасхи еврейской, поэтому как бы это был обыкновенный хлеб повседневный. That it was still what they call Passover, but leaven bread was used. Вот все период был как бы пасхальный праздник, но уже использовался квасной хлеб. Okay, fourthly, the Catholic Church later changed the method of baptism of infants from immersion to sprinkling. But the Orthodox Church, and I assume still does this, but for a long time, still immersed infants. Католическая же церковь, православная церковь, в свою очередь, не знаю, как сейчас, но вот долгое время придерживала погружение в качестве крещения младенца. Both of them intended that infant's baptism was necessary because of original sin. Тем не менее, и та, и другая соглашались в том, что крещение просто необходимо из-за первородного греха. Fifthly. Пятое. The Catholic Church held to celibacy for the priests. Whereas the Orthodox Church permits clergy to marry, except for bishops, archbishops, and patriarchs. Вступать в брачные отношения кровь и епископов, и епископов, и вот арчбишеп, 
six. Sure. The Catholic Church employed continued to employ statuaries in their buildings. The Orthodox Church continued to use only pictures with black surfaces. Seven. The Catholic Church not encouraged instrumental music. Whereas the Orthodox continued to use a At eight, the Catholic Church would cross themselves from the right to left. Using the middle finger as means of crossing. Orthodox went from left to right using the index finger and middle finger. Is that right? Well, they say it's still right to left. They say it's still right to left? Yeah. And it may have been changed through the centuries. But early in their thinking was that there was definitely going to be a difference between them. Okay. It's, you know, and, and you need to understand, you know, that through the years, different things like this begin to change as well. And, uh, but the point is that there, there, there began to be real differences or very basic differences in the way they approached things. And those things through the years, and there's probably many, many more things that we're not even going to be able to have time to list. In the протяжении годов, конечно же, менялись все вот эти разницы и разные аспекты, возможно, изглаживались, но сейчас так много изменений произошло, что в принципе у нас нет времени, чтобы все это обсуждать. Now, one of the things that began to change the enlightenment of the people. Вот что сильно повлияло на просветление людей. Was there began to be a time where they started really pushing the idea of going university. We mentioned that in early, uh, I mean, very, a lot of the Middle East, there was a very, very lack of education. And this enabled the people who were in power to keep other people very quiet and because, oh, you don't know anything. So basically what they called the clergy were the only real educated class. But universities then began to bring up. One of the early universities that came about was the University of Paris. In about the 13th century, they developed a faculty and a school that would especially address 
four main churches. Вот примерно к тринадцатому веку был собран состав физики, был собран, ну фактически как бы полный состав университета, и в основном в своем обучении они обращали внимание на четыре области. Their major areas were medicine, во-первых, медицина, law, закон, theology, теология, and liberal arts. И искусство различное. Now, what liberal arts? I mean, especially concentration upon the uh, classical Greek writings. Что я имею в виду под искусство? Это факультет, на котором изучали вот различные греческие письмена и манускрипты. From Greek education. Значит, греческое обучение. Now, can you repeat those? Medicine. Опять же, медицина. Law. Закон. Theology, Theology and liberal arts. Now, these universities began to show up all over Europe. And most of them modeled their, uh, their system after the one in Paris. We had universities in Pisa. In Vienna, Heidelberg, Basel, Oxford, Cambridge, and of course most of them patterned after the general life of the parents. By 1500, no. no. Uh, you may remember University of Paris and the four things they had in their picture their their faculty. But by 1500, there were 80 universities in Europe. And these universities began to really teach things and help people understand things that uh, for a long time they had never understood. And the philosophers in these universities often would uh, debate things not only about theology but from every subject matter under the sun. И вот теологи, которые здесь были, здесь преподавали в этих университетах, они говорили не только о библейских истинах, а о самых различных истинах, которые только можно читать. There was a limited amount, of course, of, of, of Bibles available to people. Конечно, на том этапе еще нет полной доступности Библии в руки людей. But many of these universities were able to get their hands hold of some, some copies of the Greek Testament. Но многие из этих университетов э, нашли способ, как найти, допустим, одно греческих Новых Заветов. Many of them had copies of uh, the works of, of uh, in Latin and other well. Многие из них имели копии Библии на латыни и на других языках, как не But uh, there arose some guys that began to really make a difference in the university. And I don't have time to talk about all of them, but let me just talk about one of them right now. He was actually named Thomas Aquinas. He was actually born in southern Italy. In early life, people teased him a lot and, and made fun of him because he was kind of fat and he was clumsy and he was quiet. He was actually grossed up. And people would say, oh, here comes stupid Thomas Aquinas. He's so dumb, he can't do anything. Uh, uh, 
They even called, said, called him dumb ox. Well, that was what he had to deal with. But in 11 years, he was teaching at the University of Paris. He was a very, very outstanding student. One of the things that he did was he, he kind of integrated the book of Aristotle with the Bible. And one of the things that he's noted for is writing a systematic theology. It was 4,000 pages. Basically, in a systematic theology of what a person would do, what he would start discussing everything regarding God. To discuss the relationship between the Father, then the Son, then the Holy Spirit. Then he would start talking about man and sin and the church. But he would do it in a very systematic way. Well, Aquinas put a very high value on reason. And because of his teaching, a lot of the different ones that came to the University of Paris learned how to reason and how to do the logic. И вот он, благодаря его преподаванию, многие студенты, которые были на его занятиях, они учились действительно логически относиться к тому, что они читают, и размышлять над тем, с чем они работают. И он также ободрял людей более разумно относиться к Библии, больше внимания. To understand the logic in scriptures. And so it, it really did impact a lot of people. So I just wanted to kind of introduce you to that that particular idea that that's going to become very, very, very important. Я хотела привлечь ваше внимание к этой идее, потому что в дальнейшем она становится очень важной. В понимании даже того, что происходит в будущем. Now, during the time that a lot of this is beginning in the universities, вот в время, когда все движение университета начинается, there's more things that are happening among uh, people who consider themselves to be the most Происходит также параллельно события между людьми, которые называли себя и считали себя монахами. For a while, the, the monks began to establish some different monasteries in different parts of Europe. многие монахи организовывали свои монастыри в различных частях Европы. They would try to put these into uh, areas where, that, uh, where, where pagans lived. И вот обычно они пытались свои монастыри строить там, где больше всего жили язычники. And they intended to use them primarily as means of reach. И вот как бы в оригинале идея скорее была в том, чтобы больше привлекать внимание. Many, many, many people in Europe were farmers. Многие, многие люди в Европе на том этапе были фермерами. But one of the things that was true in of these different places where they, the, the monasteries would work, these guys would learn how to plant crops, get rid of the weeds, and they usually had beautiful, beautiful farms. So they would bring these 
people into these farms where they were working in the monasteries and teach them how to farm well. So, as they were doing the good farming, they would bring these people in and not only taught them to farm, they were taught teaching them about the Catholic Church as well. Кроме того, пользуясь моментом, кроме того, что мы научали только фермерское искусство, также параллельно рассказывали им о католической церкви. One of these monasteries was um, happened or uh, was located in France. Один из этих монастырей располагался во Франции. There was William the First France in 1909. И вот был один из графов Вильям Первый французский. Nine oh nine. Who wanted to have a, a monastery in his area? Который хотел, чтобы возле него где-то располагался монастырь. And he didn't control it. He wanted the priest to be in control of it. Он не хотел его контролировать. Он хотел, чтобы им занимался священник. And he established it at a place called Cluny. И вот организовал его в месте под названием Клюн. And he employed a guy named Bruno. Туда он берет на работу человека по имени Бруно. To develop this monastery at Cluny. Для того, чтобы развить этот монастырь в Клюне. The monastery still exists today. Даже сегодня этот монастырь существует. When he asked Bruno, where would be the best location for this? Oh, Bruno, actually. Uh, Bruno. Спросили, uh, well, Bruno looked, Bruno looked all over the area, and he said the best place was, for it was on Bruno's hunting ground. But William agreed to do it. And so they started this place called the Monastery of Cluny. And these guys emphasized very strict obedience to the to the will of God to the role of the monastery. And and to the rules of monastery. Of course, their major emphasis was on very strict obedience to the scriptures. И конечно же больше всего они внимание на вот послушание писаний. Well, in order to have strict obedience to the scriptures, these guys are going to have to know the scriptures. Но для того, чтобы слушать Писание, им сначала нужно узнать, что говорится в Писании. And some of them would begin to learn the scriptures and then to what the Catholic Church was teaching. И вот получилось так, что узнавая Писание, люди больше и больше задавались вопросом именно учения католической церкви. Now, over in the East, during this time, there was a couple of other guys that became influential. In 62, the king of Moravia, which today is the Czech Republic, asked the Eastern Empire to send missionaries to people. And the Constantinople Patriarch decided to send Cyril. To go to the Slavic people. Cyril was a Thessalonian Slav. He had moved to Constantinople from Thessalonica. He taught philosophy. But before he left home, he had created the Slavic alphabet. And 
The main reason he did this was that he wanted to be able to translate the scriptures into the Slavic language. Well, Catholic and German missionaries opposed Cyril. Especially in the idea of having a Bible in the Slavic language. They continue to continue that only holy languages like Latin should be used. So Cyril and his brother Methodius decided to go to Rome to direct to the Catholic Pope about this idea. And the Catholic Pope said, well, that's going to be okay, but there is a condition there. And that is that they had to put their mission of this under the Catholic Church role and not the Orthodox Church. Now, Cyril agreed to that. But he died before he completed the mission of translating the Bible into the Slavic language. But Mathodius continued to work and was translate the Bible into the Slavic language. And here's the problem. The problem is that you can translate a Bible into the Slavic language. But Cyril had developed this alphabet based on the sounds of the Slavic language. And when they would give the Bible to the people, that people didn't know this alphabet. They didn't know this language other than speak. So it was like them a Bible in Chinese, you know? And so it took a number of years then further to teach them the alphabet, how to use the alphabet, how to make words, so finally to read and understand this Slavic Bible. But by about 900, Bulgaria had become the center of Slavic Christianity. And Cyrillic later, or you know, soon after that, had become the basic writing for the language of the Slavic people. But this became very important to the Slavic people. Because again, as people began to get Slavic Bibles in their hands, then began to read themselves what the scriptures said. So, for that reason, these two guys became very important in that Alright, it's getting very hot in here, and I'm going to give you a break right now. Well, as far as the 